Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. Why do I call this equation interesting? Uh, because we have a radical on the left hand side, an irrational number like 2 plus root 3, and on the right hand side we have another radical which is the fourth root of another radical and we're looking for x. How crazy this can get. I mean this problem looks pretty crazy, right? But don't worry, we're going to be able to solve it. The trick is finding the trick. Usually competition problems, Olympiad problems, problems like this, like puzzles, they always have a tricky piece that if you can discover that, that's the fun part because sometimes you can't and sometimes when you find it, it's like one of those aha moments. Anyways, let's proceed and take a look at this problem. Now, obviously, we can log both sides. That's probably what a lot of people are thinking at this point. So why don't we start with that? What base you want to use doesn't matter. You can use ln base 10. I'm going to use log or log for base 10. And then I'm going to go ahead and log both sides. If two things are equal, their logs are equal because it's a function that is well defined. Make sense? If x sub 1 equals x sub 2, then f of x sub 1 equals f of x sub 2. That's the well-definedness of uh, functions, single-valued functions, of course. Multi-valued is a whole different story. So now we kind of use properties of exponents or properties of logs, which are, you know, the same thing pretty much. You bring the x down. That gives you x times log 2 plus root 3 equals log the fourth root of 2 minus root 3. By the way, if you want to write this as something to the power 1 fourth, you can do that and bring the 1 fourth to the front, so on and so forth. Not super necessary. Let's say you're using a calculator, right? If you're using a calculator, then you will get the answer right away because the calculator will tell you what it is from here, right? You just have to log two different numbers and then divide them. That's it. But does it give you the exact value? No. Calculators calculate, but they only find the approximate value if the answer isn't something like an integer, a rational number. Uh, if sometimes some calculators can take a, a, like as an input a radical or a square root and also output a radical, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong again, because I'm just guessing. So this is the result, but what is that equal to? We're gonna find a better answer for this. And we can always go back here and uh-oh, that's what it meant, right? Great, cool. So let's go ahead and take a look and to be able to solve this problem, you need to discover one thing. Let me tell you the secret. Are you ready? The secret is conjugates. What are conjugates? Okay. So in the complex world, there are complex conjugates like A plus BI and A minus BI. By the way, I have a channel called A plus BI. If you're interested in complex numbers, go ahead and check it out. I publish videos. Okay, so having said that, these are complex conjugates. But when it comes to radicals, like we have square root of a plus the square root of b, then its conjugate would be root a minus root b. Because when you multiply these two things from difference of two squares, you get a squared minus b squared or a minus b in this case because you're square root, squaring root a and root b. You get the idea? So now, if we apply this to our scenario, I mean, you need to notice, hopefully you did, that this one and this one are conjugates. But not only that, they are super conjugates. What does that mean? They're also reciprocals. What does that mean? Well, if you take two plus root three and two minus root three and multiply them, you get from difference of two squares four minus three, which is one. Uh-oh, they are reciprocals. If you multiply two numbers and you get one, those numbers are reciprocals, like 5 and 1 fifth, 2 over 3 and 3 over 2. You get the idea? Negative 1 fifth and negative 5. So the product is always 1. So we have a really good scenario. What does that mean? It means that one of these can be expressed in terms of the other. For example, you can write 2 plus root 3 as 1 over 2 minus root 3 as the reciprocal, or 2 minus root 3 as 1 over 2 plus root 3, because this is always going to be true. And that's a huge advantage. How? Let me show you. So let's go back to our original problem. We have 2 plus root 3 to the power x equals the fourth root of 2 minus root 3. 
Okay. The first step, I'm going to write this as something to the power one fourth, because that's what it is, so that both sides can be somewhat exponential, not radical on the outside at least, right? Cool. Does this mean x is equal to one fourth? Nope, because the bases are not the same. But even though they're not the same, they're related. How? By this. Look at that. They are reciprocals. Ta da da da. So we can write one of these in terms of the other. Which one would you like to go? I wanna. I don't wanna mess with the x part. So let's keep this as is, and mess with the right hand side. Can we? We can write 2 minus root 3 as 1 over 2 plus root 3 because the product of those two things is 1. In other words, they are reciprocals. You get the idea? Cool, cool. Now, what do you do? You use the negative exponent rule. 1 over something, like 1 over a, is a to the power negative 1. Great, so now we can write this as 2 plus root 3 to the power x is 2 plus root 3 to the power negative 1 to the power... One fourth. How nice. We have two powers, superpowers, multiply them, right? You get 2 plus root 3 to the power x equals 2 plus root 3 is the base to the power negative 1 times 1 fourth, which is negative 1 fourth. And what does that mean? The bases are equal, so are the exponents. So x equals negative 1 fourth. Who would have thought, right? This is so complicated. Well, not really, but unless you know the trick, of course. So that is the answer. We found it. Is there another way to do it? Yeah. I mean, you can use logarithms, but at the end, you need to simplify. And do you think when you simplify with a calculator, it's going to give you negative one fourth? I think it will, because that's a pretty simple answer. It doesn't need to be rounded. It's just a nice rational number, right? Make sense? So that should be the answer. Now, if you look at the original problem, is there another way to do it? Probably not. Okay. Uh, another method that I can probably think of is, I just thought about it right now. Let me write the original problem. So we have this. I think the right hand side was the fourth root of this. So I'm, I, this is what I'm thinking. Since 2 minus root 3 and 2 plus root 3 are conjugates, why don't I multiply both sides by... The fourth root of 2 plus root 3, because under the radical, this is going to turn into 1. Look at that. How nice. Of course, you have to do it on both sides. So I'm going to multiply here as well. And that should give me something good, because we will have the same, same what? Same basis. Like, oops, I probably should use parentheses here. And no, here actually. Or both, whatever. Something like that. So now we have the same thing, but this is 2 plus root 3 to the power 1 fourth times 2 plus root 3 to the power x. And this is equal to 1 because this is 1. And that is basically 2 plus root 3 to the power 0 because any number to the power 0 is 1. By the way, how about 0 to the power 0? It's also 1. You don't believe that? Go ahead and check out my video that I made. I think it's, you can find it here. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, no, that doesn't work in general, whatever, so on and so forth. You can just say whatever to those people. Now, here we're going to do the following. We're going to add the exponents. X plus 1 fourth. That's equal to 2 plus root 3 to the power 0. If these two things are equal, then X is equal to negative 1 fourth. Houston, we have a solution. Case closed. Thank you very much. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.